when in fact I should have been trying to quit smoking. I, I didn't stop smoking. Uh, hold on, I'm sorry. I got a little confused. I started to drop weight, but in my mind I can justify what I was, why I was losing weight. Kind of like sin, we have a tendency to try to justify what we know is wrong. Uh -huh. For example, I used to smoke, but I'd say to myself, at least it's just the cigarettes I'm smoking now. Ooh. I'm not doing any of the other stuff that I was doing before. So, this ain't so bad. Mm. But in reality, it was just as bad. So, uh, mm. then, I started to drop the weight and other things that started to happen to me as well. It got difficult for me to open my mouth. You know, I got an abscess or swelling started to come up on my jaw and in, in my cheek area. And I was just like, oh, you know, it's probably just a bad tooth. I don't want to go to the dentist. I ain't going to pay somebody to like cause pain. But that's just me. Finally, it was like, it started to hurt and things started to like really get hard for me. I started popping Tylenol, extra strength Tylenol. Like it says like take two every six hours, four hours or something like that. I was whooping down like six to eight of them every three hours. Got so bad that I just finally got started. I remember I was at work and I just started spitting the blood. And this kind of freaked me out because I didn't know what was going on. You know, um, it wasn't until that happened that I went to the doctor. And really, that was only because Jocko made me go. Because <laughs> I was still been popping his on. <laughs> now, I say this to the men more so than to the women, because for the most part, we're a lot more stubborn than the women. If you start to notice changes in your body, do yourself a favor. Take your bus to the doctor. <laughs> because while I went through a lot of stuff that I didn't necessarily have to, because I kept trying to make it up in my mind why it was happening, I went to the doctor. I'm not saying that I wouldn't have had to go through some stuff, but it would have been a lot easier on me, I think. So, Having said that, I remember going to the doctor. I went to the emergency room, got a Long Beach Memorial. Ran some tests. And I'm just like, okay, well, you're gonna come back and get a prescription, I'll be on my way. But I was sitting there, and when the doctor came in, he told me, oh, you got cancer. And he said it all nonchalant, like it was no big deal to him. Now, and in reality, it wasn't that big of a deal to him, but this is life-changing news to the recipient. So I had to step back for a second and just like, wow. And I remember sharing, sharing the news with Jackie. She wasn't trying to hear it. It wasn't going to let, she wasn't going to let them put a label on anything that they said that I had. Now, unfortunately, she's friends with Drea, and Drea was the same way. Oh, you don't have no cancer. <laughs> I'm not letting y'all put that people on you. I'm like, okay, cool. And at first, you know, I was like, they just being silly. They just, just own up to what's what. Just deal with it. I appreciate them standing firm with that. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. It still didn't change the fact that I had what I had, and it is what it is. But what it does is you got to get your mind right with stuff. Yes. Your mind is going to carry you a long ways. Yeah. You know, and I thank you for that. Um, in James 2.26, it said, For as the body is without spirit, the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Yes. yes. Now, for me, the first part of works 
to show my faith was to get it in my head, it wasn't going to stop me. Right. You know, now when I got the news that I had was diagnosed with cancer, I never felt like it was going to take me out. In fact, I remember telling Sandy, yeah. yeah, I'm sick, I'm down, but I'm not out. Yeah. You know, I never had the mindset that I was going to die from this. Now, some of that might have just been me being too stupid to be scared. But some of that was also, you know, my determination. I'm a lot of things, but I'm definitely a fighter. All right. I'd like to fight with these a lot more than words, but <laughs> it is what it is. But let's be real, though. I can stand here before you, not for anything I did, but purely for the mercy of God. Yes. And mercy that if I'm truly honest with myself, I didn't deserve it. I'm not grateful. I'm, I wasn't deserving of it. For all the stuff that I did against God, there's no way that he should have been looking out for me. Yeah. You know, and I'm grateful for that. So now I started my fight against this thing called cancer. And I gotta have an MRI. Now, for those of you that have never gone through an MRI, when you see it on TV, it's not that big of a deal. It's not. It's this big old white machine, they just throw you through it, pull you out of it, it. But now when you have to go through it, it's a different deal. Because they don't show you that you gotta get strapped down. <laughs> and you gotta sit there forever, not moving nothing. And then you got this bang, 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 going on in your head. It's, it's, a, it's a big ordeal. And to be truthful with it, it wasn't something I, I was accustomed to doing. I'm not good with being confined. And there was a couple of times I had to stop the procedure altogether. I was like, I can't do this. Y'all gotta let me out of here. I gotta go home, I gotta pray. I gotta get my mind right with this. Mm -hmm. And fortunately for me, I could go and I could pray and God would give me the strength to go back the next day to do this. But if I was left on my own, I wouldn't have made it at all. In Isaiah 41 and 10, it reads, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. You know, God lets us know that those that believe in him need not fear anything. We may be going through, he says, fear not for I am with you. That means you're never alone. If you call on the God, he's there. Yes. You know, we have a relationship with him. This is why he lets us know that he is my God, he's your God, he's our God. Mm -hmm. yes. He's not just somebody we think about, or we see over there. Right, right, he's right. with us. Amen. You know, it's because of this bond that we have with him that we can feel free to call him yes. and he will strengthen us. Amen. He will give us the strength and he will help us to overcome anything that's in our presence, in our midst. Yes. You know, because truthfully speaking, we're not going to be able to do it on our own. Mm -mm. Right. You know, and even if we think we're doing some stuff on our own, we're not. Yeah. We're fooling ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so now I get past all of that, that stuff, you know, and I start the chemo. Now the chemo, in and of itself, it wasn't that bad, other than it took me eight hours to do. You know, they go in there and they shoot you with a needle and now you hooked up to an IV and boom, you got to sit there and let it drip. I can deal with that. What I wasn't prepared to deal with was the after effects of what happened. Now, like I said, when I started this, I was about 205. After waiting about a year, I got to about 190. Started the chemo right around 190. After I started that chemo, 
The only thing I wanted to do for two weeks was lie in bed and drink ice, ice cold water. It's the only thing I took in other than the pills. And because of that, I went from like 190 down to 129 pounds. Wow. You know, the only thing I would get out of bed for, other than to go to the restroom, is Sandy would take me to radiation therapy. And that was a journey in and of itself, because sometimes we'd make it there without having to stop. Sometimes we go, we have to make the stop so I can throw up. And I'm surprised he still let me in his car. <laughs> a couple times I wasn't sure if I was gonna make it happen. <laughs> but I, I thank him for that. I lost so much weight in such a short period of time. <laughs> they decided they wanted to put me in the hospital. And it was kind of crazy to me because Sometimes you don't realize everything that's happening to you until you look at yourself from outside of your mm -hmm. perspective. Now, when they admitted me to the hospital, once again, Sandy was there, he was taking me to a normal oncology appointment. It wasn't a big deal. The thing that made me mad about the, the appointment that day was, it seemed like we were there forever. Waiting and waiting and waiting. And I went up to find out how much longer I was going to be there before they got to see me. And I guess to them, I looked totally sick. Now, to me, in my mind, it wasn't what I was feeling. I didn't feel, I mean, I didn't feel me, but I didn't feel like I was that sick. And if Sandy thought I was that sickly, he never let me know. <laughs> I appreciate that. But they looked at me like, oh, he's about to fall any minute. So they snatched me up and sent me on to some room up in the hospital. You know, uh, I kind of lost it. So, um, the sad part is I didn't have to let it get to that point. Well, I never feared that I was gonna die from any of this. I wasn't really doing all I needed to do to improve my situation. Mm -hmm. Now, when they first diagnosed me and everything and we started taking the steps to do the stuff, they put a tube in me that I was supposed to get my nutrition from. I stopped eating a lot, primarily because it was hard to open my jaw. And then with radiation, it took my taste away, and none of that was any good, you know? But I could have still done my two feeds, but I didn't do that. Like I said, for two weeks, I didn't do anything, you know? And that was my fault, you know? You can't just kick back and let God do everything for you. Right. Now, I'm not saying that he can't or that he won't, mm -hmm. but, there's a certain point that you need to do what you need to do for That's you. That's right. Well. That's right. Okay. Like I said before, works. Faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know. In James two twenty one and twenty two, it reads, "Don't you remember that our ancestors Abraham was shown to be right with God by his actions." When he offered his son Isaac up at the altar, you see, his faith and his actions worked together. Yes. His actions made his faith complete. Yes. So unless I was willing to do my action, my faith couldn't really be fulfilled. Yes, amen. And complete. Amen. For me, that meant I had to start doing the two things, which is a pain in the butt. I mean, to be honest, it's long born process. I forgot to mention that some of the other things that were going on were they had to pull out all my teeth. So that made it difficult to even have a desire to want to eat anything. You know? Let's see what else. They pulled out my teeth for the radiation and infection because of where it was and they put the tube in my stomach. 
And now I still probably get maybe 70% of my nutrition on these through the tube. I eat a lot, I got a big mouth, but I still get most of the stuff through my tube. But it's a mindset saying, look, you've got to do this. Yes. Because I'm trying to gain weight back to where I was. You know, I had to make that decision so that I could do all that I could on my part to beat this. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm happy to say I stand before you today weighing just shy of 190. I can say this experience has helped me grow in my faith. Amen. You know, I have a strong relationship with God. Amen. I quit smoking the day we go. Amen. You know, I learned some humility through all of this. Because for me, it was hard for me to like look at myself as what I had become, where I was depending on everybody. Because I'm used to doing stuff on my own. And my wife, she was a trooper. Because I gave her a lot of problems. I'm not a good patient. And she tells me as soon as I'm 100% healed, she's going to hit me. So I'm never going to be 100% healed. <laughs> So now, I'm grateful for this, and I have a happy ending. And I, I praise God for that. You know, Jeremiah 17 and 14 reads, Oh Lord, if you heal me, I will truly be healed. If you save me, I will truly be saved. My prayers are for you and you alone. Yes. Jeremiah 30, 17 reads, for I will restore you to health, and I will heal you of your wounds, declares the Lord. Amen. Amen. I got three minutes. Sorry. Oh man, I got 18 pages left. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you or anyone you know is going through some stuff, y'all gotta stay strong in your faith. Yes. Now, you may not get the results you're looking for in any of that. I can't promise that. You know. James 5, 14 through 16 reads, if any of, anyone among you are sick, let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. Amen. And the prayer offered in faith yes. will make the sick person well. <laughs> the Lord will rise, raise them up yes. if they have sinned they will be forgiven. Yes! Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that, they, so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Yes! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Philippians 4.19 reads, And this same God, and this same God who takes care of me will supply all of your needs from his glorious riches which have been given to us in Jesus Christ. If the Lord is watching through some things, I pray that you never forget what he's done for you. Yeah. You know, take time to enjoy the small blessings in your life. Sometimes the biggest blessings aren't the things that you think they might be or that they should be. Sometimes the biggest blessings are in the things that we take for granted. Yeah. Sometimes your biggest blessing is just being able to wake up to those that you love. Yes. Being able to see the smile on your baby's face if you have children. Amen. Being able not to be hit by your wife. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just to be able to be around your loved ones, that's a big blessing. Yes. And we take these things for granted. And I pray that we don't do that. You know, we never know when our last opportunity is going to be with someone that we love. That's right. So I pray that each and every one of you take the time to tell those 